Discipleship class started in uh, 1989. Some of y'all wasn't born. 1989, uh, the Lord had called me out of a ministry I'd been in 13 years. And another brother came out to start a church, and he asked me to come and assist him, to help him. I stayed there with him seven years. That's 20 years, child. We did 20 years stand under somebody else. The old preacher told me, the old preacher said, uh, uh, Junior, he called me Junior. He said, Junior, it takes 20 years to make a good preacher. I, I looked at him and said, oh, old man, you better cut it out. And he was right. It took 20 years. Then God called us out. Smoking for Jesus ministry, 1989, I think we started, yeah, with my brother. We stayed with him until 1996, we started Smoking for Jesus ministry. So you could count a little bit, you ought to know it's about 25 years old now, plus 20 before. Huh? That's how long. So 45 years, if you could add a little bit. That's 45 years gone, right there. Right, that's where we at, 45 years. All my young life from 24 years old was calling on Jesus. Calling on Jesus. I found Jesus on the floor in my house with some headphones on talking about the world as a ghetto. And the picture said, you've tried everything else, try me. So I got an audible call, I, I realized after, that God called me out, and he's sustained it 45 years already. Mm -hmm. So now we're just not just talking and feeling no more. We talk and experience, have seen much. It's seen much. If you had time to sit down, maybe I could tell you half of it, to tell you that that's why I believe he real. Not just because the Bible says he's real, and, that, and it's correct, but I've experienced he's real also. So I, I, I ain't trying to control nobody or tell nobody. I'm just trying to look out for you before you, you learn it the hard way because he is real. The Bible says he's a consuming fire. I come to warn you of the terror of the Lord, that he's real. And what he say he does. Amen. Mount up come in uh, zero 05. Had been spoken for Jesus maybe about 10 years. Uh, had a block and a half of all kind of stuff going on. But the Lord saw fit to bring us here. To take us out of the way of harm's way. Now, we had been here 11 years. The block that we had with the buildings, shopping center, after 11 years, we looking at the news here, a tornado took all the buildings out. Hmm. We'd have been in the building with some of you children that are teenagers now. You'd have probably been dead. Tornado took out everything. Everything. We went down there and walked the grounds to look at it. And, and some of y'all don't realize that was another miracle God did to get us out of harm's way. Because we would have been, we had the restaurant there, we had the school with the children like we have now. And some of y'all got killed that day. Tore up everything. They say, you know, you don't know that. You don't understand. God did that. He picked us out of the way, brought us here. So maybe you might know this real. Hmm. Them people lying. That's all they're doing. They're just lying to you. It's real. What God done already. Read the verse, brother, because, you know, I, I, I start this and start telling stories and stuff. Read. Come on. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Hmm. Jesus speaking to his disciples. Say, look, fellas, y'all blessed because y'all actually have experienced being with me. 
But blessed are those that have not talking about us. That gonna believe and have not seen him. Gonna believe just because we heard it in the word. Huh? But we didn't really actually sing in him. But what should help you is your life supposed to be transformed by the power of God. Now, this didn't just start yesterday. God promised this during the time of Abraham. 6,000 years Old Testament, he promised. But, but God uh, operate like my great-grandmother used to say. He's slow as molasses in the wintertime. He's just slow. He takes his time for, to get it done because he has more involved than just you. There's other people that's involved that need to understand and know surely there's a hell and there's a heaven. There's no, you, you, you playing games. It's real. But he never let nobody come back to tell you. Some people come back and tell you how horrible it was to go down that dark tunnel. But it still don't excite most people. They don't get it. They want to go to see for themselves. I don't know what sense that makes, but that's what you want to go. You want to don't believe. Unbelief is the greatest sin you could commit. That's the trap of what we've been talking about. I, I usually just keep running the same thought. Maybe you could get it because that's how I was taught the 15 years, 13 years, and then another seven listening, and individuals that stay to the subject, don't go here and there. Stay with it. We've been talking about how wicked and desperate our hearts are. The flesh man, the carnal-minded man that Paul talks about. Most people don't understand the warfare is in your mind. It's in your heart. And it comes out your mouth, what you actually believe. Because oh, Jesus talks about, say, if you could confess, oh, there's blessing that comes out of your eyes. There's blessing that comes out of your mouth. What you say comes from your heart. That come out of your heart, what you talk, see? That's why people, there's a, a sin in a multitude of words, Proverbs say. In other words, as you talk, you sin it because it's coming from your heart. So this is how it's set. So he wants you to be able to speak what he says already. If you can renew your mind, if you can keep your mind stayed on him, he say he'll give you perfect peace. But you have to renew your mind with what he said, not what you say. Now, in Hebrews 6, verse 13, uh, unless you had one of them scriptures I quoted. A couple of them. You got them? Okay, well, y'all must be elder on the other line or what? <laughs> Matthew 15, verse 18. Okay, come on, you got to come on, though. You got to come on, come on, let's go with me, come on. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, uh -huh. and they defile the man. Uh-huh. Now, that's how I teach. I didn't say that, sister. He said that 2,000 years ago, and he said, heaven and earth going to pass, my word going to stand forever. He said, I'm going to swear what I said, that I'm going to do it because ain't nobody better than me, so I'm going to swear by myself. That's what God, God a gangster. Baddest gangster you ever see, and he proved himself. He's proved himself already. Now, you got to be a fool. You, you, all y'all, you hear what I'm saying? And my audience that's streaming. You got to be a fool that that book is still alive, still saying the same thing. You know you smoking blunts. You, 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 you shooting dope or something in your mind because you cannot understand that what he says is going to come to pass. But, you know, but I, I say you're on dope, but... Self-will is stronger than dope. Cause you can sit right here now and don't it don't move you. 
You strong. You strong. Remember when you were on a habit, you had to go get it. You are stronger than alcohol in your mind. Because you done made up your mind, you are about not to change. <laughs> Whoo, Jesus. I'd take out running around this. Because <laughs> my Lord, that's, that's heavy. Huh? Okay. What you got? Come on. Hebrews 6, verse 13. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. You ain't got it yet? Come on. But when God made promise to Abraham, because uh -huh. he could swear by no greater, he swears by himself. I told you, God got bad, Jack. He just loving and kind and long-suffering, and people take him to play with. That's a trap. Come on. He swears by himself, what? Saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Uh -huh. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Yeah, okay. God going to give you what he said, but you're going to have to endure. And you got to believe what he said. Now, uh, for God made a promise to Abraham. Because he couldn't swear by nobody greater, swore by his own self. Now, this promise is for salvation, that he would deliver man from himself. God had took the time to give Moses the Ten Commandments, knowing that they couldn't keep them because they didn't have the Spirit. Most people can't be no Christian, they find quickly, because there's a warfare going on, huh? that Paul talks about in Galatians chapter 5, he says there's a war going on between us and the Spirit of God. And that war is going to continuously battle. So what, it would be easier to play religion and not a born-again experience, not a changed lifestyle, but do what you want to do and God going to wank at you. That's, that's what it's talking about. God, uh, how your brother say, and I don't... Uh, Call it sloppy agape and greasy grace. Because <laughs> it gets sloppy when you start disobeying what God said. And going along with the way you feel what you think. And I said, Pastor, why are you hamming away at this? People die every day without the Lord. Not knowing what it means to be born again. Well, some of them got to the point where we got, they believe once they're dead, they're done. And there's no life after. You just die and you just, they just bury you and that's the end of you. That, that, but that's what the devil wants you to believe. That's not taught in scripture. There is eternal life. You were born to never die. Uh, the first one, uh, the first one is going to the grave. The second one is being totally separated from God, clear in Scripture, as kid. Now, most, as a child, you need to understand that, that this is nothing to play with your life. Uh-uh. Because your life going to lead you one place or the another. You're not exempted from the rules that's already set. But what Satan want to do is keep you blind to that fact till you get there. Then you can't do nothing about it and he do high five with them demons. Because he got you. Huh? Come on. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Yes, sir, brother. Come on. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit uh -huh. and the spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that you would. Now, you say you, you, in the Easy Bible, that's King James, been reading it 30 years, but let's, let's look at Easy Bible right there. Watch. The things that you want to do as a weak human person are opposite to the things that God's Spirit wants. Now, before I was saying, how many times we say we know that's wrong, but we can't help ourselves? It wasn't about us not knowing it was wrong. We desired to do it. So there's somebody else there look like it. 
because you had a fight a lot of times. You were, uh, uh, you felt sorry, but you wasn't convicted. Because you went on and did it anyway. Come on. The things that God's Spirit wants are the opposite of what we want as weak human people. Our now, that's the carnal-minded man, the natural-minded man. He really don't want to do the thing. Now, I know your man is better than what I said. That you think he really want to do right. In certain incidents, yes. But as God bring you through, you're going to find out there's some stuff in you or you're not growing. Or you're not quiet. You're not maturing if you don't find out because you mean to tell me that means you really don't need a Savior. You are right. You are contradicting what he said then. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So now you telling me you better than that. I, Pastor, you know, you just was like that. Everybody here, from the president to the man under the bridge, all of us are born from Adam and Eve. Well, unless you come through the Big Bang Theory or you come from ape. When the last time you went visit your cousin in the zoo? Since you come from ape. Well, well, if that's all that's messed up then. So if all of us are the same, we all start on the same playing field. Now, most of you don't like that. I was from a better family than you, Pastor. Uh huh. See, that don't have nothing to do with your your nature, huh? I have nothing to do with it. We still are the same. We just do sin different. That's all. You just need to be honest. So you need that Jesus and need to be sanctified too, just like everybody else needed. Salvation is for everybody to be delivered from their. Sins. What sins? Whatever. You just slowful. Why, why y'all looking strange? You, you never have no time to pray. You have no time to read the Bible. You have no desire. That's what he's talking about. You fight. You fight right there. Now, the things you like, movies, games, whatever, you enthused about it. You don't know something wrong with you. But the very thing that's going to lead you to eternal life, you're not even interested in it. We all got that. That's why Jesus had to die. Where you can put a new spirit in you. Where you can be interested in spiritual things. Well, I'll be and you thought I was interested in reading the Bible when I was 15, 16, 20. I didn't come to the Lord until I was 24. I wasn't interested in reading no Bible. I knew John 3.16 from Sunday school, vacation Bible school. I would learn that Jesus wept. That's the shortest scripture in the Bible. And actually, you'll quote me, you'll find the shortest one, Jesus wept. Well, nothing. Well, I say I can't talk to y'all like that. Tell them a lie, Pastor. No. <laughs> you got that? You read the verses. Are you feel you with me or what? Yes, sir. You too? No, sir. Uh-uh. Easy Bible, right there. Come on. Our own thoughts fight against what God's Spirit wants us to do. They need to hear this, that you're going to hear this judgment day because he got it in the easy Bible for your plain vanilla. Ha! <laughs> Because that's the truth. Our thoughts fight against. That's why you ain't shouting with me. Ain't nobody make no noise. They ain't saying the amen, nothing, just looking like. But if you was at the place where you wanted to be, you'd be jumping up. The brother, these New Orleans people, I know they buggy. <laughs> I know they used to buggy. See, now they're all still and. What's wrong? See, y'all cut it out. I'm getting too old for this. 
<laughs> Do you understand that? No way, brother. Come on, man, hurry and finish. I got to go. I'm with my time. I'm, I'm going to have 45 minutes under my belt if I turn around. Come on, go ahead. You are not free to do, the, to do the things that you really want to do. You are not really free to serve the Lord because your human nature was against that. You got to have a VH. You got to understand this is real. Now, most people lie to cover that. We've been preaching the same thing for almost, what, 40 years. Ain't that different? Same thing. You're going to have to have Jesus to get you free. Amen. Come here. Verse 18. But Call if God's out. Spirit leads you, then the rules of God's law have no authority over you. Uh huh. Everyone knows the kind of bad things that weak people want to do. They have sex with people that they are not married to. Oh, in your Bible. Right there. They do things that are bad and dirty. Yeah, because they, they follow the world. Boyfriend and girlfriend, that means they got to get some, prove it. Somebody need to tell somebody in church something. Come on, go ahead. They worship idols. Uh huh. They do magic to hurt people. They do all kinds of stuff. They do witchcraft. Do all kinds of stuff, hurt people. See, so now watch. Because that's of the natural man. Come on, hurry, come on. They hurry. become enemies and they fight one another. Uh -huh. They are jealous of other people. They become very angry. They want to please themselves and to be important. They cause trouble. They make people belong to different groups. They want things that belong to other people. Okay, they, they're jealous, they're envious, all that. People in the world. That's not Christians now. That's the flesh. You fall in the way of the flesh. Now, God promised, I got to hurry to get a little something here to tell you tonight. God promised that through Abraham, he would send the Savior to be able to rectify what needs to be done to help you to be able to overcome your natural man, natural woman. See, you got to have somebody to help you because you're going to go in the wrong direction if you're not. See, you're going to become selfish. Got that? All right. Got that? I, I got to go on, Ellen. Uh, Romans 4, verse 13. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Romans 4, verse 13. All right, Aaron. Huh? Yes, sir. Easy Bible. Come on, y'all. God promised to... It's already up already. Come God on. God promised to Abraham and to his descendants uh -huh. that the, word would, the world would belong to them one day. God did not promise that because Abraham obeyed any rules. God promised it because Abraham believed in him. Okay, that's the point. God promised it because he was going to teach him how to believe in him, how to trust him. Now, some of y'all know little Bible. If you know Abraham and how God promised Abraham a son and he was almost 100 then, and Sarah was 90, and it was nothing was going to happen with them two. But God said, you're going to have a son, and from this son, he was going to multiply. The whole nation going to come from this child. But at that age, there was no way. So God said, okay, this is a test to see if you would trust what I said. Now Sarah fooled around and had a baby, and she was almost 100. Isaac. Huh? But Sarah wasn't convinced that that was going to happen when God first told her. So they conjured up what the handmaiden, the servant girl, and Abraham fooled around and uh, fornicated, committed adultery, and here come uh, this child. But God said, well, okay, I'm going to use this to show the difference between the thing that happened in the flesh and the one that's going to happen in the spirit. So in other words, long story short, Sarah going to get pregnant at a, a supernatural. And this is how you're going to know the difference between individuals that do it in the flesh and those that walk by faith, not by sight. Those that trust God and what he said. See, that's going to be the, that's how you're going to be able to distinguish it. And 
in Scripture is going to show clearly what I need to do if I'm going to overcome my human reasoning, my feelings, what I think, how I feel by the Spirit. See, you got that? I'm, I'm shortcutting it for you because I would go to the story and show you how it turned out, but it take more than this one setting to do that. But it just to brief you where you could understand. So what God's going to do now, he know that he gave them the law, but they, in the natural, they can't keep the law. Amen. You can't be no Christian. I, I, I'm saying it like that. You cannot be a Christian in the natural. That's why most people fall. Because as soon as God tests them to see if they trust him, they get angry. They quit because they don't have the understanding. In other words, they don't have wisdom of what it's going to take to be a Christian. See? You know, and and many, being the Lord many years and don't understand that God is one going, you are going to prove that you trust the Lord. Not to him, to yourself. He already know. But you need to prove that you can be controlled and led by his spirit. You have to prove that. So this promise that he gave. Now, uh, probably just for background reference, Ezekiel 11, verse 19 and through verse 21, God's word, they put it up right quick. So I'm going to the interpreted versions where you can understand. Because uh, it, it, 45 minutes ago, an hour, I could be here. I got 16 more minutes left in 45 minutes I've started. Time passed fast when you're having fun. All right, got that? Okay, come on. God's word. Yes, sir. I will give them a single purpose and put a new spirit in them. That's what God did when Jesus died. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he come to change you. Now, I fight with many people when God trying to change them, they want to still be them. I want to be myself. That's the money trying to control people. The Bible controls you to get you to become born again. Come on. I will remove their stubborn hearts and give them. Because you stubborn. I'm stubborn. Set in my ways. I got certain things I want to do. And God said, "Uh uh-uh. You know, God wants you to ask him where to go. When to do certain things. Because you might get on a, a plan <laughs> that he already know was going to crash. So you need to seek God. Is, should we be doing this right now, Lord? Now, I know what you said. I'm my own man. Okay, be it. Boom. <laughs> and he said, Pastor, well, I'm almost 70 years old. What's your problem? You're supposed to be controlled by the Spirit of God. He might keep you from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But those that become great in the Lord get the big head. The Bible says those that become great in the Lord become as little children. Mm -hmm. The longer, the more childish you are. Daddy, father, what you say? What you want me to do here? When you want it. I get scared to go places because I need to know that's what he wants. Oh, 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 Pastor, you, you just do what? You just go. Go ahead. Huh? Who, who life? You see, you keep forgetting that your life is not your own. You've been bought with a price when you come to the Lord. Boy, I could hear the units running. That's what's supposed to happen when you get sick. You see, see you, 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 you're going to mess up. Because you're going to violate what he said. And the devil said, bravo. I ain't got to do nothing. You're going to do yourself. Because you're going to violate what he said. You're supposed to be controlled, led by the spirit. So you let the spirit lead you now. Now, the Spirit can't lead you being big-headed, stubborn, have your way. 
Spirit ain't fighting nobody. Bible said the Spirit is gentle. Spirit ain't go, ain't go, probably ain't talking loud as I'm talking to you. He's not going to do that to you. He's going to let you have your way. Come on, finish with me, please. Verse 20. Then they will live by my laws and obey my rules. Mm -hmm. They will be my people, and I will be their God. Uh huh. They will be my people in verse uh, 20. 20. 21, please, then. But as for those whose minds are set on following the testimony. He worked right hand and left hand. If you don't want to do that, this is what you get. That's the way God is. I, ain't never, I don't understand people staying one-sided. God ain't one-sided. God right hand and left hand. Now, make your choice. Come on. Go ahead. And disgusting idols, I will pay them back for what they have done, declares the Lord Almighty. Okay, so that's the way God is. God is a father. God is not man dependent and let you go have your way and then you're going to just sit around and you're going to pretend all your life that you are right. You're going to, one way or the other, but he leaves it up to you now. He's going to give you chance after chance, but he ain't going to make you do nothing. You're going to have to make the decision. You got that? Now, so then, uh, New Testament backs that in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14. It backs it. The Bible is like a puzzle. You just put it together. Take time. And has pieces, and it just flow together. You can't be one-sided talking about the Lord. You're going to have to learn to balance out because God is a balanced God. God is not just one-sided. God go both ways. And what he's trying to do is to get you to understand who he is. He don't make no mistakes. Don't tell no lies. That's the way he is. Now, you're going to have to trust him that what he's doing and his judgment is going to always be right. Might not look right. God allowed things that everybody know wrong. The wall in here know it was wrong. But God tell me, he said, now what you going to do about it? I ain't doing nothing about it. I'm allowing it. Because I don't break nobody's wills. But I'm going to deal with it. And later, yes, I'll, we'll deal with everything. Come on. Easy Bible. Yes, but sir. those Israelites people could not think properly, even today. They still do not understand the message of God's old agreement. When they read it, they are like people who have a cloth that covers their minds. Now what I'm doing, I'm showing you because they wouldn't believe God and trust God. That same thing happened to you. Once you disobey God, then there's a veil come over your mind you can't understand. Because you refuse the simplicity of the gospel. You will not believe that he sent his son to die to deliver you from yourself. Oh, well, you say you good then, right? You all right, right? Everything good about you. Hmm? When the Bible say your heart is wicked and deceitful, who could know it? But you say you all right. When you come to Christ, that's what he come to control you. Listen, just because you say it, but you are not willing to give him access to you, you're not willing to trust him. Now, what I'm talking about is, when I say I believe in the Lord, then I have to trust him after that. I can't be calling the shots, telling him, I don't believe that was the way, that I wasn't right with you loud or what you did. What? Look, y'all got quiet again. Sound like that, the, the doors back there open. Huh? You trying to tell God, he don't know what he's doing. Now, you don't know all the details of why, because you can't understand but from uh, what? You can't understand from minute to minute. God said he know what's going to happen 10,000 years from now. He know everything. And, and he said, well, then you want to blame him now. And it wasn't his fault. He tried. To get you to repent, try to get people to do what's right, but they refuse to.
But who's going to say he's not good? Come on. Second Corinthians chapter 3, right? Verse 14. Yes, we have verse 15. Right. Uh -huh. Come on. Even today, when the Israelite people read Moses' book, a cloth still covers their minds. But when a person turns to trust the Lord, then God makes the cloth away. The that's, Lord, that's when you can get revelation. You start getting understanding. Right now, some of y'all, you ain't trusting the Lord, so you ain't getting nothing. Because you still got a, 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 a vendetta against him. So now it's block you now. Because you could tell him he wasn't right. That's why some people become depressed. Some people go so far as they are not willing to live anymore because they can't understand they're not God. So they start judging God, telling God he wasn't right. I'm never going to smile again. Oh, yeah, that's good sound effects. You got that? They start telling God. I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to be stale and dusty and disgusting and mugged up because you ain't did right, Lord. You got to come on and get over it now or it's going to kill you. That's what it's going to do because it kills your joy, Amen. your peace. You got to go on. Now, I'm talking to Christians now. Amen. See, because you're supposed to know that God I'm going to call on you to give me joy. I'm going to call on you, Lord, to comfort me. Yes, I'm hurt. Yeah, I've been wounded. I, I, I feel like I've been betrayed, all that. But God, I'm going to call on you, or oh, this is not real. It's not real. You're just wasting time now. You're going to have to stay high, high get you a high or something. But you're supposed to be able to draw from God. I promise I was going to show y'all how to draw from him. Huh? Second Corinthians chapter 4. Now, I'm loading you down with the word. That's what, I'm, that's what I do. So you won't say, pastor said. The Bible says. I'm letting you read it. Huh? Go ahead. The verse. Second, Second Corinthians chapter, what is it, got? Three? Chapter 4. I, I said chapter, First Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 3. Verse 3. And verse 4. Sorry. Come on, brother. King James Version. That's but fine. But if our gospel be here, it is here to them that are lost. Uh-huh. Okay, come on, verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Okay, see, when you don't believe, you blind your mind. Spoke already. You don't know that's there. But once you stop believing... That stop trusting him. Then he start blinding your mind. Now, finish it. Come on. I'm going to go to the easy Bible, but you got to come on. Come on. Go ahead. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, uh -huh. who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your service for Jesus' sake. Okay. But easy Bible. Start back at verse 3, please. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Okay, because you don't believe. You sit there and you judge it. Second guess it. You ain't going to believe him right now. So now you can't understand. He got you. Now you're going to be crying, talking about I can't understand this. You the one blocking the revelation to understand. Now I'm, I'm just walking on the walker. What you're taking is slow because somehow people don't get it. God got everything in order already. And God got a manual, but most people don't read no manual when they buy new stuff anyway. Got a manual. You just follow the manual. No. But that means you're going to have to die to yourself, your opinion, what you feel, what you think. Come on. Some people may not understand the good news that we speak. They are only the people who are losing their lives with God. Uh -huh. Those people do not accept God's good news. The God of this world has confused their minds. They cannot see the light that the good news brings. The good news. 
Now, you know what the good news is? God sent his son to die for me, a sinner. I have to recognize I am a sinner and I need him daily to help me. That's the good news. So most people refuse the good news anyway. Come on. That message teaches about the great power of Christ uh -huh. who shows us exactly what God is like. It shows Christ is the example of who the Father showed who God is, how you can please him. That's what Jesus' job was. Hmm. Come on. We do not speak a message about ourselves. That's right. We tell people that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Because we belong to Jesus, we have become your servants, not your masters. That's right. So we serve. Serve the word. Serve an example of what is supposed to be a sacrifice that you're supposed to give unto God your life. That's what we do. Now, yes, sir, almost done. With, not with this, but my time. Okay? <laughs> Acts 26. Acts 26, verse 18. Now, he's going to help you to really understand, but you have to show you trust him. In other words, what you believe, uh-huh, uh I trust him. That's what belief is. I trust what he said. Not just for my benefit or what I want to do, but I trust him because the gift he's given, I'm talking about God the Father, his son, to come and die for me. Now, when you trust somebody or something, you show it with your gratitude. That's how you show it. I need, I, I need to talk to you. I just don't want to talk to you when I need something. I need you, I need a relationship with you on a daily basis where you can help me not to just take care of myself, but to be able to serve you. That I can be a light to show somebody else this is good. Huh? I don't just uh, uh, look for, try to make a living. I want to make a difference with my life. Some people just want to make a living, want to make a difference. That people can see there is a different way than just uh, going, getting education, making money uh, for myself. And that's it after that. It's just for me. Pull myself up by my own bootstraps. That's what you're showing. No, you're supposed to be able to show I'm leading these individuals with my life to him. Amen. To him. Now, I've been to many funerals. If that's not there, you have nothing. If I can't say, and the people outside and the ones that get up and testify what you did for the Lord, you ain't did nothing. You did nothing. I don't care what else you did. You was a star and all kind of stuff and did all, your face was on the billboard, on the poster. You did nothing because you couldn't take nothing with you. Where you're going? Nothing. If you can't, if they can't say you were inspiration to lead them to Christ, your life, what you said and how you live, you did nothing. Somebody else is going to spend your money. Somebody else is going to ride your car. Somebody is going to do everything, huh? If you're married and you leave your spouse, somebody going to be setting up in there. You have to say that. <laughs> it's the truth. What's your problem? You, you, that's all I'm saying. Yes, you're probably going to get to, hey, 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 what's the problem? See, you don't want to be real. That's the problem. And the, the body of Christ is suffering because people are not real. And they lie all the time. That's what they do. Stop lying. Come on, El come on. Elder's going to come back home next week. Come on, go ahead. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. So what is for? To open their eyes and turn them away from this fake life. That's not real. You know what a mirage is. When you get that, there's nothing. That's what you're going to get. So the devil's a master. We need some people that are going to be masters in the word. To be able to set and show people clearly in scripture. Now, after that, 
It's up to you. I'm trying my best to persuade you not to do that. But to get to where you really trust the Lord, just like you trust all the rest of the stuff you gung-ho about. It's easy to prove huh? how much time you spend with it. What I gave you, Acts 26. Verse 18. Verse 18. Easy Bible. You will help them to understand what is tr really true. Uh -huh. They are like people who live in the dark. Teach them what is true about me. Then they will be like people who live in the light. Now Satan has power over them. Lead them from there into God's kingdom. Okay, because as long as you don't believe and you don't trust, devil got power over you. That's how the power is broken. I changed masters. He was my master, see? Because I pleased him well. My thoughts, dance with him, drink with him, run with him, did everything with him. Wasn't thinking about no God. It wasn't reading no Bible. So I know I was a sinner. See, now it's hard to get to people who was religious all their life. But they never was born again because they can't tell you when they really changed. They tell you, I always been. Well, there was no, no reason to get born again then if you always was like that. You, can you remember when you wasn't interested in the things of God? Or, or you just went to church, but you really didn't give him your heart. Didn't have no relationship with him like that. Got quiet again. Come on, brother. Then God will forgive them for the wrong things that they have done. So in other words, everybody going to have to come to God to get forgiveness. Amen. There's nobody come in this world perfect. And if they live till they're about 13, they, they got unperfect. Uh-huh. Because they done done something. Told a lie. Well, the First person I'd never told a lie, please stand up. Give me a chair. <laughs> huh? You done done something in life. Said something you had no business. Say it at the wrong time. Huh? You did something. Come on. Because they believe in me, God will accept them as his own people. Uh-huh. Got that? Because they believe in him, then God would be able to accept you. That's the only way to get in. You know, you're going to have to learn how to worship God in the spirit. But your, your heart has to be circumcised, the scripture used, uh, cut away, made different. Uh, I'll talk about that next time. I'm not going to get into it because that was the purpose that he sent his son because we couldn't do this on our own. His son had to come and complete the task, open the door for us to get in. Because of what Adam and Eve had done, it blocked the way. Now, God took many, many years and many prophets and many, many people to work it to the place where the Messiah had to come, Jesus Christ. He had to come, be crucified, not, not because he was bad, but he got crucified, and, and they horribly beat him for my sake. Nails in his hands, and then and he had to die. Now, he couldn't fake dying, because then this wouldn't be real. He had to really die and shed blood for my cause. Now, I, I got to know this is the most important thing in my life now. I can't put that second... That's the most important thing in my life. It got to be in your life. Now, the quicker you can accept it and receive the love that he had for you to go and live somewhere forever, peace, paradise, but not only that, that you can be able to have a fulfilled life here. See, because Satan's going to try to make you miserable here. That's what he's going to try to do. Do you, you don't notice that people that, although they have a lot of money, they still have mental illness? Amen. Some of them get so bad where they, they want to commit suicide because they don't have no peace. 
Peace comes from the Lord, not from things. Not from everything going right all the time because it's not. That's not life. You're going to have trouble in life because you live. The Bible says men are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall see them through them all. So I mean, I have trouble, I've had trouble, I have problems, but God has seen me through them. Just because you get saved and say, well, man, you're no, 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 no. You have to live life. There are going to be mistakes made in life. There are going to be trouble come in life. And you're going to need somebody to call on. Huh? To give you some peace. So God helps people in their mental illness. Yeah, he helps them. He said he's God of comfort. That's what he said. So he can comfort you when it don't even feel good and it don't look good. Now, I'll close, Lord. Got to close. Then, you're going to have to worship him by the Spirit of God. Now, easy said <laughs> than done. That means I got to have a mindset on who he is, that he's right, he's kind, he's loving, and he cares for me. He cares for me. He, that, but you got to be able to say that for yourself. That this God want better for me than I want for myself. Amen. See, you got to understand. Now, you're going to have to believe it before you could be able to trust in it. So, stand to your feet tonight. I got to close it right there. I'll pick it back up next time because I'm going to continue. Because what God's trying to do is put a new heart in you. That's what he said he would do. He would change your, the way you think. Well, your heart going to be different. Then that going to change the way you react. It's going to change your behavior. It's going to change what come out your mouth. But the heart got to change. See, the heart got to change. If the heart don't change, you can become religious, but there's nothing to do it. Oh, no, it doesn't change. Because if you're not a light to somebody else, then you have to be a light in this world. Because he wants you to be able to push what's right. That's what he wants you to do. Now, I, I'm not finished with this, but I want you to consider that you would be able to change because of his power. Now, the first thing, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have to accept him and accept not just he's my Lord and Savior, but you have to accept who you are. You have to say the same thing, who you are. That's why he came to die for you where you can change. I have a bad attitude. I don't think like the Lord. That's why I have to renew my mind. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 verse 2 says you have to renew your mind. You have to renew the way you think. So I have to carry myself that way. Everybody should know uh, I can't take credit for nothing that God has done to get us here and what he's done. Amen. All glory and honor go to God. Now I don't care what nobody say. I, I ain't did this. I ain't changed my life. God did it. And God kept doing it. Huh? Now I have to give him permission to do certain things because he's not going to just take your life and make you pray, grab you by your hair and drag you out the bed, make you read the Bible, make you have some devotion with him, some quiet time set aside, just you and him and your Bible and you meditating on how good he is. Just you. See, I, See, those, these things are not taught. That's why it gets so quiet, I see. Because you have to draw now unto God and he'll draw now unto you.